dude's ideas of ice and fire here. I'm outside because uh, I don't know why, but yeah. Today, I'm talking about a shy. Uh, shy by the shadow, which is uh, the most like mysterious lake and secluded city in all of the song Last and Fire. It's like at the edge of the world, supposedly. And beyond a shy is like this mysterious place called. Uh, the world of Ice and Fire gives it a specific name, but let's just call it the Shadow for right now. And I got the world of Ice and Fire here, and I just, just recently read the whole section for a shy, and it's really cool. Um, yeah, so I knew a little bit about a shy already. I knew that it was like this dark city, but uh, what I didn't know was that it's made entirely of the same greasy black stone. That's like all over the planet uh, where Westeros is. It's like the sea stone chair is made out of that black, black greasy stone. Uh, there's a bunch of other stuff like the mazes and whatever that city is. But there's like a bunch of shit that's made out of this greasy black stone. And the Ashai, the people that live in Ashai have no idea who built the city. They don't even claim to know. They're just like, yep, yeah, it's always been here and it will always be here. So they have no idea who fucking built the city. So it appears that there have, there has been a civilization in Westeros that basically was there before like basically everyone because who built a shy and plus the fact that it's like a place where there's, there's so much magic practiced is you know pretty wild I mean what exactly was this ancient civilization all about you know why do they have all this stuff all over the planet this greasy black stone shit and why are all that where you know it, it's it's weird and I, re I talked about uh, my idea that, you know, these people from, quote-unquote, the Shadow, because uh, that's also in the world of Ice and Fire, there's a myth that they are the ones that actually gave the Valyrians dragons and taught them, taught them how to do magic and spells and sorcery and all that stuff. I think that's probably where, uh, what happened. I'm, I'm pretty positive on that. But, yeah, let's talk about, actually, the goings-ons in a shy. It's like, it's, it's a lot more creepy of a place than I expected. Like, any kind of magic is, like, accepted there. Uh, like, uh, Kyburn would have a field day there, because necromancy, you can do whatever you want. Torture, uh, it lists it all out here. There's, like, you can basically do what you want in a shy. Any kind of fucking fucked up magic. You're free to perform all your spells and rites and rituals or whatever in a shy. No one gives a fuck. Everyone hides their face in a shy. It's like a dark city. It's covered in, like, um, I don't want to say smog, but, like, uh, the book describes it as, like, ash uh, that blocks out the sun, so it's, like, always dark. The water in a shy is you can't drink it. it. It's, like, black, and it glows at night, and it has all these, like, weird fish. Like, fish, imagine, like, fish that you'd see at, like, the bottom of the, the ocean in a nature documentary. Like, the glowing, weird, creepy, deformed fish. Like, you don't eat those fucking fish. It says in the book that only, like, shadow binders or, like, fools ever uh, eat fish from the... Uh, fucking water in a shy because you just don't um also nothing grows in a shy except gro ghost grass so they have to get all their fucking shit shipped in and also what's fucking crazy is that there are no children in a shy and also no animals in a shy so that's weird it says that uh animals that are brought to a shy just die just fucking die like like horses and fucking dogs mules, donkeys, camels, all those types of animals just fucking die. It's like soon after they're brought to a shy. So there are no animals in a shy. I presume the same thing happens to children. I don't know why, but it, it, it says here that perhaps they're more susceptible to the chemicals in the water or the ash or something. But it's very, very uh, odd, I think. Uh, there, what, there was something else. The land's beyond a shy, too. It calls a shy the end of the world, but there's... Uh, let me see. Okay, it talks about the further that you go east from a shy, the more like fucking crazy and twisted the monsters become, the darker it gets. And eventually you're just like in this place. It's like super dark and it's called until at last one stands before the doors of what is, is called Stage. Stage, I don't know. And it's called, it's the corpse city, supposedly. The shadow's heart where even shadow binders fear to tread. Or so the stories say. So even further east, there's the uh, Corpse City, which maybe there's all this fucking interesting stuff that hopefully we get to see. I know we're never seeing a shy in the series, supposedly. Maybe we'll get to see the Corpse City. Maybe we'll get to 
uh, dive deeper into the actual shadow. Um, also, there, there are said to be dragons, uh, east and ashai, according to the world of ice and fire. Um, in the caves that pockmark the cliffs, demons and dragons and worst make their lairs. So supposedly there are dragons uh, very far east. I mean, I don't know if that's necessarily 100% true. Because it is kind of a big deal that Daenerys' dragons are like the first dragons in like forever and you know, dragons that haven't been seen for forever. So it kind of like, kind of fucking doesn't make a whole lot of sense that there was already dragons in like way over in, a, in the east. And he goes, you know, in the first book, Daenerys asked about dragons. She says, are there still dragons around? Like, I'm back in the house. Yeah, you didn't think magic was real, did you? <laughs> but anyways, like I was saying, God, who the fuck is vacuuming upstairs? This is just my luck. But anyways, Daenerys asked in the first book, are, are there still dragons in the east? And everyone's basically like, no, dragons are fucking finished. So, yeah, and it's kind of like a big deal that our dragons came, you know? So I don't think that there are any dragons probably in the east of Isha. I think that's just, just nothing but a myth. But yeah, I think it's rather interesting that there are no children in Ashai. Then I get the animals part, but do children die if they enter a shy? Like, why are there no kids? Do people just choose not to have children? And I think it's also important to note that Daenerys apparently can't have children. I mean, if, if uh, I mean, Quaith is from a shy, and Quaith visits Daenerys, and she gives her all these prophecies and shit, so. And Quaith is a shadow binder, and in this book it does say that shadow binders are the most sinister of sorcerers in a shy, so that that leads me wondering: is is, is a character like Quaith really a good character, or is she like uh, deceiving Danny into doing something? I don't. I'm not entirely sure. But yeah, what else is a important note in this book about a shy? Because we really didn't know much about a shy from you know the other five books in the Song of Ice and Fire series. Um, dark cities steeped in sorcery, warlocks, wizards, alchemists, moon singers, I don't know what that is, red priests, black alchemists, I don't know what that is, necromancers, aeromancers, I don't know what that is, pyromancers, blood mages, torturers, inquisitors, poisoners, god's wives, night walkers, I don't know what a night walker is, shape changers, I guess that's similar to a skin changer, or maybe that's someone that can actually change their literal shape. Worshippers of the Black Goat and the Pale Child and the Lion of Night have no idea what any of those three things are. All find welcome in a shy by the shadow where nothing, nothing is forbidden. So you can just fucking do whatever the fuck you want. Here, they are free to practice spells without restraint, censure, conduct, their obscene rites, and fornicate with demons if it is their desire. So basically, you can do whatever the fuck you want in the shy. You don't have to worry about oppression from like, the government. You don't have to worry about saying, hey, no one do that. Because you know, in... In most of the world, this type of shit is not tolerated. Like, uh, Kyburn was banished from the Maesters for uh, doing, like, experiments on people. So that's why... Which is also why it's even stupider for Cersei to have this fucking dude in fucking the Red Keep with her. Dude, he was fucking kicked out of the fucking Maesters for a reason. He tortures people, which Cersei seems to be okay with. I mean, she gives him people to torture, so yeah. Fucked up. Um, yeah, but Ashai is described as the end of the world. It's probably not actually the end of the world. I have a creeping suspicion that just past that shadow, beyond the shadow of Ashai, you're just going to end up on the other side of Westeros. That's my uh, personal theory. I think that it is, it's a circle. It's a planet. So when you go east in Ashai, you end up uh, somewhere near Dorne or on the other side of Westeros. In my opinion, that's what I personally think. I don't think it makes sense. The world, the, the world can't just like keep going. I mean, Martin is playing on you know ancient human ideas that you know the world ends at some point. Uh, but we learned later through knowledge that you know the world doesn't end; it just keeps going. It's a it's a sphere. Planets are spheres. That's just a simple fact of reality. Planets are spheres. If Westeros is a planet, then it's a sphere. I mean, I get that it's fantasy, but I don't think that. It would be that fucking crazy and weird or that it would that it would be like a fucking square or something or just keep going on forever. It circles back around. You know? That's what I think. Um, 
And also, let me look at a map real quick. Hold on. Okay, so Pike is on the other side of Westeros, the Iron Islands. And, you know, if uh, it really did circle around, uh, like, like I said that it probably would, they would probably end up somewhere over there. So that would kind of explain if these are... I mean, because the people that built a shire are obviously the same people that built, like, the sea stone chair and shit like that. So if they uh, circled around, then they could easily, like, put up that sea stone chair. And then, you know, because it would be kind of... It would be kind of close, you know? All you have to do is, like, sail right, right across and you loop back around. But, yeah, I think the more important question about these people that built a shire and built... And, made all this black greasy stone shit is what the hell happened to them because they fucking vanished there's like all that we have of these people is what they left behind like the mazes of Murat or the sea stone chair or the city of shy itself we have these remnants of them but we don't have any of their like writings or i guess i guess these spells in a shy are probably like from that time i guess but we don't really have any history of them we don't know what they looked like, what their culture was, or any of that shit. We just know that they were an ancient, very advanced uh, civilization. They have to be very advanced. I mean, because it's black stone shit. Nobody knows how to fucking make it. They can shape it into, like, weird fucking ways. Very similar to the way that v the Valyrians uh, learned how to uh, shape stone. You know, you know I'm, I'm so sure that I'm right about this. I know I, know, I know I could be completely wrong, but I'm so sure that the people that built a shy is this ancient culture or civilization are the same people that gave the Valyrians the knowledge to tame dragons and the knowledge of sorcery and spells. I, I'm so positive about this. I mean, and I've talked about this in my other video, but so I'm not going to get really deeply into that. Um, my video on the origins of dragons and the White Walkers and shit. Because I also had a theory about that these people might have some hand in creating the White Walkers. Whoever these fucking people are, but, you know. It's very interesting. Um, yeah, Shy. It seems like not a, a thing about a Shy and reading about what it says here. I don't know how much of this is just like, you know, just like fucking people that just fucking make up shit. Because, you know, no one goes to a Shy and comes back and it's like, oh yeah, this is what happens in a Shy. Like, if you go to a Shy, then you either like stay there. Like, when you hear about a Shy, it's like from like a. Like some merchant or like a singer or someone that's not really fucking reliable. You don't really get people too often like Quaith or Melisandre that have actually been there. Not just walking around Westeros and telling them about it. Because, you know, you know, people like Melisandre, they don't tell you shit about a shy. Melisandre rarely even mentions a shy. Quaith hardly ever mentions a shy. All we know is that she's a shadow binder. By the way, the most sinister of sorcerers of shy are the shadow binders. Just stand if Quaith is a Shadowbinder and Melisandre is a Shadowbinder. I don't remember exactly if Mil Melisandre actually refers to herself as a Shadowbinder, but I know she is referred to as a Shadowbinder in either A Clash of Kings or A Game of Thrones. Someone at the small council mentions that Stannis Baratheon has brought a Shadowbinder from a shot. But that could have just been like a fucking failure, failure of translation, you know, like people just... Uh, like how you might call somebody, like you, you don't have a lot of knowledge about something, so you might call an elf a dwarf if you're like that stupid. If you've, if you've never seen Lord of the Rings, you might, oh, look at the dwarf. But you know, like, bitch, that's a fucking elf. You know what I'm saying? Maybe that was just like a mistranslation. Maybe Melisandre's not actually a shadow binder. Because there doesn't seem to really be any kind of connection between shadow binding and, you know, worshipping the red god. Um, those two things are... Uh, not necessarily mutually exclusive, but they don't have to, they don't have to go together, you know. So, uh, yeah, and also, uh, for some reason, there's a lot of gold and gems in Ashai. Uh, wait a minute. The ships come down the list for gold and gems and for other treasures. All right. Yeah, there, there's like, uh. Yeah, ships come to Ashai because of their abundance of gold and gems, and it says other treasures. For certain things spoken only in whispers, things that could not be found anywhere upon the earth save the black braziers of Ashai. So I'm guessing, like, uh, weird, strange spells or potions or uh, stuff like that, like creepy shit, you know? People come to Ashai for gold and gems, and more specifically, uh, 
magical items. It's also where Daenerys got her dragon eggs, which is very interesting. And suspicious, because Quaith is from Shy and she's like following Daenerys around. But when this story unfolds, I'm hoping that some light is shed on Shy, no pun intended. But for now, it's very fun to speculate on Ashai and the history of this ancient city, very ancient city. It's been there for a very long time. I mean, Ashai is very, very old. I, don't, I, I think it's about the same age as Winterfell, because Winterfell is the oldest castle in Westeros, I believe. I could be wrong about that. Don't quote me on that. But Ashai has been there for very long. There are legends in Ashai from before uh, the Age of Heroes. So the Ashai has been around for a very long time. It's ancient. According to the Ashai people, it's been, it's been there since the beginning of time. And, you know, it has to be older than Winterfell if it's made almost entirely out of this greasy black stone, which, by the way, is said to, like, absorb light. Like, you'll put a candle next to it, and it'll, it'll, it, it won't be as bright as it would be if it was just in a normal room that's made out of normal stone. So it's definitely some magical properties. Definitely some black, creepy magic going on in the Ashai. Um, I don't know if... What were the Ashai people doing, do, doing during the Age of Deliria? I mean, dragons are said to come from the East, uh, from the shadow, uh, the shadow beyond the shadow. That's where dragons supposedly came from. I don't think that dragons were actually layering in the 14 fires. I think that's just like something that the Valyrians made up because of their vanity. I think that, you know, I've been given my theory, people from the shadow, which their dragon said to still be in the fucking shadow now. So people from the shadow had knowledge of how to control dragons. They came to Valyria, gave the Valyrians dragons for some fucking reason, and the Valyrians conquered the world. And that was that. So, yeah. Maybe these people were, like, I'm hoping, I'm hoping that these people will be revealed for what they are. I want to know who they are. I mean, you really wouldn't know about any of this, really, unless you were looking at forearms on the Song of Ice and Fire website, or if you got a World of Ice and Fire. I mean, that's the only, that's the only way I put it together, like looking at all these tiny little sidebars. And you know, that's the thing that really gets me to make me think that that's very important is because it's in the sidebars. And as you know, George R. R. Martin writes the sidebar. So if you felt that it's important enough to talk about these mysterious people from the shadow giving uh, the Valyrian's dragons, I think that we should put some stock into that. So that's um, a shy for you, a place where nothing grows and magic is practiced openly. There are no fucking children, which is great, <laughs> and no animals, which is not so great, but you know how it is. So basically, don't go to a shy because you never know what the fuck's gonna happen. I'd probably be afraid to go to a shy, like, cause you know, fucking torture is fucking legal in a shy. Someone could just take you and fucking chop off your fucking balls. Like that's what happened to fucking Varys. It wasn't in a shy, but you know, I'm pretty sure the guy that did it to Varys was from a shy or was a sorcerer from a shy. So yeah, don't go to a shy. It's fucking creepy. Thank you guys for watching. Subscribe for more ideas of ice and fire if you want to hear more like ranty rants like this. Yeah, so I ramble, I know. So thank you guys for watching. Leave your comments. Tell me what you think about this whole uh, thing. Peace out, dudes.